Hello everybody. Thanks for joining me with this adventure. This video today is about the install and it's the install for my ground mount system. I do plan on doing more solar videos. So I've been looking into solar for years, but I got serious in 2018. Originally I wanted to go with Tesla Solar, but found out that they couldn't install on my roof because of the metal roof that I installed in 2016. Now I wasn't about to replace my roof again, so I decided to forego solar in 2018. Then in 2019, I found out that the government rebate of 30% was going away at the end of 2019 and it was going to go down to 26%. Once again, I set out to try and find the right solar for me, but this time I used a website called Energy Sage. Also, I wanted a ground mount install. The pitch of our roof just was not conducive to solar, so I knew that I wanted a ground mount installation. We live on an acre and the entire backyard is not fenced in. Only a third of the backyard is fenced, fenced in. The other two thirds just sits there. Shoot, that's the perfect place to install something that you don't need to look at. I told everybody on Energy Sage that I wanted a ground mount system and they provided quotes accordingly. I had a system all selected and was working out getting it installed when my wife said, stop, let's wait. Now, me being the typical guy, I'd already done the legwork, I'd already done months of preparation, read through and watched many comparison videos, talked to five or six installers. Finally, I chose an installer and I chose a system. Needless to say, I was ready to go. I was ready to pull the trigger. I even had financing. I even, as Elon said, financing was approved. So, those of you that are married though, know what would have happened had I not listened to my wife and gone ahead with the install. So I listened. Her point was valid. In fact, she was correct. There would be something better later and I would wish I had waited, is what she is one of the things she said. She knew something that I didn't. She knew in, in talking to me about this project that I wasn't completely satisfied with the system I picked up. Even though I thought I was, I didn't realize that I wasn't excited. She did. So our main issue is that it didn't have a backup solution. She only had to ask me one question to wake me up and stop. The question she asked, she said, what would happen if the power went off during a beautiful sunshiny day? Huh. Fellas, if you think you know everything, take a moment and listen to your wife. I had the answer to her question, but my answer was not a good one. I told her that, well, we would have a $50,000 solar system sitting there unused until the power returned. See, smart woman asking the right questions. That's why, fellas, you always got to ask your wife what her opinion is. I put a stop to the talks and it ended up missing out on the 30% re rebate for 2019. Life happens and the timing just didn't work out for us to get the solar system installed. When 2020 came around, I knew that really this was going to be the last year I could get this project going because after 2020, the rebate falls to 22%. Um, and then I think at the end of 21, it falls down even lower and then eventually it just goes away. Uh, at 22%, it wasn't going to be enough payback for us to install such a large system. So I knew, I knew 2020 was going to be my last year really to do this. The return on investment just wouldn't be there if we didn't get at least 26% back. This time I knew what I wanted. I wanted a solar system that would not only power my house during the day, but would also recharge power walls. Yes, I said walls. Once they are recharged, I'd then spin the meter backwards until the sun went down which would produce enough power to fill in those gaps. Also, the power walls would kick in when the sun went down and provide power until the next day when the cycle would begin anew. What happens if the power goes out during a nice sunshiny day now? Nothing. We would see no change. That is the system I wanted. Let me tell you, it is not cheap. Once again, 
back to energy sage we went. Once again, read quotes. Once again, tried to decide the best solution for our needs. I did finally pick a system. So let's talk about the system that I installed. First, the contractor. I had a quote with a company called SunPower and I wanted to go with them, but the price was really up there. I mean, they were a good 25 to 30% more than any other installer. Also, the price that I got quoted from them was only for two power walls. And during this process, I realized I really needed three or four power walls. So I wasn't going to go below three power walls. I wasn't sure two would be enough. I had several other quotes for two power walls. And I had 50 to 60 panels for 26% less than SunPower. In the end, I chose an installer out of Houston called Sunshine Renewables. Their main selling point was that they could get me a system with three power walls, as well as a solar system that should come close to net zero energy for my house without the power walls. So I ended up with 50 panels and three power walls. This, in my opinion, was the best of both worlds. And it was at least 25 to 30% less than SunPower. Also, Sunshine Renewables allowed me to choose my system. I had researched tons of panels. I mean, I had two years of research on panels and inverters. I, I knew that I wanted to go with the LG Neon 2 series panels. Uh, they had a higher efficiency. They had less loss um, over the lifespan of other panels. Inverters. Basically, there's two types of, of inverters. You have string inverters and micro inverters. Micro inverters allow each panel to operate on its own. String inverters only perform to the level of the lowest output. Meaning if you have a panel that's only producing half of what it's capable of, then the other panels will only produce to that level. So for me, I knew I needed, I knew I wanted a micro inverter system. Micro inverter systems are usually more expensive because you have to have an inverter per panel, whereas string inverters you only need a couple. So which microinverter? I decided to go with Enphase. Enphase to me seemed like the best. Um, also Enphase offered monitoring for each solar panel, which I really wanted to know. I wanted to know what my solar panels were producing. I wanted to be able to watch each solar panel. So my overall system that's being installed, and right now they're running the conduit in my garage, I have 50 in-phase microinverters, I have 50 LG Neon 2 solar panels, and I'm going to have three Tesla Powerwalls installed. I'll do a separate video on the Powerwall install. As you can imagine, this system's not cheap. However, with the tax credit back in my pocket next year, I'll be paying financing about what my monthly electric bill is and I'll be paying that out over the next 20 years. Uh, this is a long time for the system, you know, for, for an expense such as this. However, my ROI is going to be 20 years. So at the end of 20 years, obviously my investment will start making money. ROI was the last factor for us. We knew we'd take a big hit adding the power walls. Originally we had an ROI of 12 years with just the solar system and that was what I came up with in 2019. It was going to take 20, 12 years to pay off the solar system. However, the solar system was replacing our electric bill so in 12 years we were going to start seeing a return on our investment. When we added the three power walls it added another eight years of ROI. So the question is, is that worth it? Well, can't answer that. <laughs> I don't know if that's worth it. Today's just about the installation of the solar array. Uh, that's all this video is for. The next video will be for the power wall installation. And that video should be coming out soon. So thank you all for watching. And have a good day. Make sure that you subscribe and tune in for the next video. Thanks.